we're going to talk about ellipses. Now you probably know generally an ellipse is like, you know, a dilated kind of stretched out circle, either squished or stretched in a different direction. Um, but we're going to go a little bit deeper into um, some of their properties. So it turns out an ellipse is actually defined as the set of all points in a plane which have a constant sum of distances from two fixed points called the foci. Now that, that's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to show you uh, what I mean by that. So over here, we have two points, F1 and F2. And these two points are called the foci. And what I what this, this little diagram is tracking is it's tracking from any point that I choose the distance from this point P to F1 and the distance to F2. And if you add those distances together, they should always be the same. And not only should they always be the same, they're actually equal to the full uh, major axis of the ellipse. So you can kind of see up here, they're going to track the ratio of the two, right? Over here, I do this little bit is A plus this bit is B, and that gives me, because there's a bunch of overlap here, right? The full length uh, A plus B, and A plus B is equal to the full length of the, the major axis. If I go over here in the middle, I can make them about equal, and no matter where I go, this distance is constant. Okay, so the distance from the point to the first focus plus the distance from the point to the second focus, that ratio is constant the entire time. Okay, not ratio, that, that sum is, is constant the entire time. So that's what an ellipse is. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to try to draw an ellipse here and label some important bits on it. I apologize in advance for my poor ellipse drawing skills. So let's say we have... Uh, this, that's a pretty bad. Okay, so I'm gonna draw an ellipse. Um, we're gonna say that uh, we're gonna start off with the ellipse centered at the origin. So this is where its center is, zero, zero. And I'm gonna draw it so that its major axis is along the x-axis. Not terrible. Uh, and we have vertices here. So this is a vertex. And this is a vertex. Okay, We call this bit that connects the two vertices, this is called the major axis. The bit here that connects the two, you know, not main vertices is called the minor axis. Okay, so uh, the foci are located between the vertices, uh, and each one is located uh, a little bit between the, the vertex and the center. So I could have one focus here, for example, and I could have another focus here. Those foci, we say, have a distance of c from the center. So this point is negative c0, and this point is c0. The vertices, we say, are a distance a from the center. So this is called, uh, this point is negative a0, and this point is a0. The endpoints of the minor axis are also important. And we call those, we say they're a distance of b from the center. So this is negative b0 and b0. Okay. This A, B, and C, uh, this is going to be key to constructing an ellipse. Uh, and not only that, but actually most other conic sections we work with are going to have corresponding A, Bs, and Cs um, for their, their diagrams as well. Okay, So a couple of keys here is the standard form of an ellipse looks like this. It's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Or you can also have x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. Where in this setup, we always a is always going to be the length of, um, or half the length of the major axis, so the distance of one vertex from the center. So a is always going to be bigger than b. Okay? And depending on whether a is underneath the x or the y, you actually get some information about the ellipse just from that. 
If A is underneath the X, then your ellipse is going to be along uh, the X axis like this. If A is underneath the Y, then your ellipse is going to be along the, the major axis is going to be along the Y axis like this. Okay. So just by looking at what, which, whether A is under the X or Y, you automatically know which way the major axis is going to be. Now the length of the major axis, you can just tell from this diagram. Uh, the major axis has a length of 2A, and the minor axis has a length of 2B. Right? If these are both B from the center, then the full length here is going to be 2B. Okay. Uh, and then there's a relationship between A, B, and C, and I'm going to show you what that relationship is right now. Let me get rid of all of this. Uh, and we're going to, again, kind of use this diagram. I'm going to draw it a little smaller over here. I'm sorry, my ellipses are so bad. So this was the distance A, this is the distance B. And then we're going to have... C over here, same thing, distance of B, C, A. So if I, if I know that this property is the, uh, of the ellipse is that no matter what point I choose on an ellipse, the sum of its distance from one focus plus the distance from the other focus is always constant, then I'm going to apply that to two points that are easy to calculate, A and B. So if I choose the point A0, what is this special constant sum? Well, I know it's distance um, to the first focus here, uh, the one that's closer, is going to be A minus C, right? This full distance here is A. This distance is C. So it's going to be A minus C. This is the distance to the first focus. And to the second focus, it's going to be A plus c, because the distance of here is c as well. So I do a minus c plus a plus c. Now my c's cancel, my a's add, and I get 2a. Now I'm going to do it for the point 0b. For 0b, the distance to each of these I can just use the Pythagorean theorem for. right? The distance to the first one is going to be equal to uh, the square root of b squared plus c squared. And the distance to the second is going to be the same thing. Since this distance is c and this distance up here is b. So then I can just find the hypotenuse by using Pythagorean. Which means uh, that the total sum is going to be 2 times the square root of b squared plus c squared. This gives me a really important relationship because if I set these equal, since they have to be equal because we're in an ellipse, and every point if I add the distance to the two foci together has to be the same, 2a equals 2 times the square root of b squared plus c squared. My 2's cancel, and I end up with this relationship, uh, which is that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. You'll also often see it written as c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. This is going to be an important relationship uh, because what it lets you do is if you're given only two pieces of information about an ellipse. Say you know where the vertices are and you know where the foci are. It lets you figure out where your minor axis should be, right? It gives you it gives you the last couple of critical points in order to actually sketch an ellipse accurately. So this is a really important relationship um, when you're working with ellipses. Okay. So now let's look at some problems. Uh, let's say I want to find the foci of an ellipse, and I want to graph it. Okay, find the foci and graph. Uh, let's say the equation I'm going to do this for is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So to start off this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if I want to find the foci and graph, I remember from my ellipse equation that the larger value is my a value. So 9, this value, is equal to a squared. So I have a squared is equal to 9, and b squared is equal to 4. This means that a is 3 and b is 2. So this is going to give me 
the coordinates, the two points that I need to uh, indicate the vertices and the length of the minor axis. And because I also want to find the foci and graph the foci, I can then say <clears throat> that c uh, is equal to the square root of 9 minus 4, a squared minus b squared. And that gives me the square root of 5. So now I can draw this and say, OK, the larger number is underneath my x. So that means that my ellipse is going to have a major axis along the x-axis. So that means that my verte vertices are going to be located at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And my minor axis is going to have endpoints at two, at 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. And uh, the square root of 5 is you know, a little bit more than, a, than 2. So let's say my, my foci are going to be somewhere around here. And you can get a decimal and actually calculate if you were doing this. And then I can sketch my ellipse really poorly, and my lumpy egg ellipse. And you know, I'm sorry, this is bad. But something like this, right? So you want to basically look and say, OK, what are the numbers underneath the x and the y? Identify which one is a. Identify if your major axis is going to be along the x or the y and then find the foci. And once you have those, you're done. Because you know that, OK, that means my vertices right, are going to be located at positive and negative 3, 0. And the endpoints of my minor axis are going to be located at positive and negative, or 0, and then positive and negative 2. And then you get your uh, foci. So why don't you try doing a couple of these? So I'm going to give you a couple of equations. And I want you to pause the video and try to graph them. OK, so identify the key info and graph them. So let's look at x squared over uh, 9 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. And why don't you also try 25x squared plus 16y squared equals 400. So pause the video now and try to identify the key points for these two ellipses and then graph them. OK. So now that you've presumably graphed them and identified key points, I'm going to do the same. So I notice here the larger number is under the y, so my major axis is going to be along the y-axis. So my vertices, since my a is going to be equal to 6, my vertices will be located at 0, positive, negative 6. And for b, the endpoints of my minor axis are going to be located uh, at, so b is going to be 3, so 0, uh, or I keep doing this wrong, uh, positive, negative 3, 0. So then my graph... It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I can sketch this, and then I want to find my foci. So my foci, I do uh, c is going to be equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared, so it's going to be 36 minus 9. Um, so this is going to give you uh, the square root of 27, which is about 5.2. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and like right here, right below where it is. I basically made, drew my vertices as circles that were too large. But they're right here. The foci are right underneath it. Um, and that's my first one. For this ellipse, we actually have to put it in standard form first, right? So I'm going to divide by 400. When I do that, I get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. This is also an ellipse that has its major axis along the y-axis. So here, a is going to be 5, b is going to be 4. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are not even equally spaced, whatever. Here you go. We're going to be a rather circular ellipse, but. We'll try. OK. And then the foci um, here is going to be equal to uh, 3, right? Because we say c squared is going to be equal to a squared minus b squared. So 25 minus 16 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So my foci are here and here. OK? So that's how you graph ellipses. Um, that's how you extract useful information from them and then graph them. Um, and we can also kind of go the other direction, where if I give you the foci and the vertices, you should be able to write down an equation for the ellipse. So let's say I tell you that an ellipse has foci of negative 1, 0 and 1, 0. 
and it has vertices at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. And I want you to find the equation of this ellipse. So to do that, I'm going to say, OK, well, the fact that the foci and the vertices, the foci uh, are along the x-axis tells me that my major axis is also going to be along the x-axis. So A is along the x-axis here. I know this ellipse is going to be centered at 0, 0, um, because everything is all, uh, you know, has a y-coordinate of 0. So A is going to be equal to 2. C is going to be equal to 1. From this, I can say b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. That gives me 4 minus 1, which is 3. So now I know b squared is 3. Uh, I know my a, I know my c. So I say, OK, well, my larger value, just remember that, that that's a, because b is equal to the square root of 3, right? This is equal to b squared here. So my larger value is a. And that has to be underneath x, because my major axis is along the x-axis. So my ellipse equation is going to be x squared over 4 plus y squared over 3 equals 1. You can see what we did is we said, OK, the foci tell us uh, whether our major axis and our vertices are going to be along the x or the y-axis. Here, it's going to be along the x. So that means that my a was going to go underneath the x. We can then use a and c, a from the vertices and c from the foci, to calculate b. And we're going to put the b, b squared, underneath the y. And that's how you get the equation of the ellipse from this kind of information. So now I, again, want you to pause the video in just a moment. And I want you to calculate the same thing. Get the equation of the ellipse based on the following information. Say I have an ellipse that has foci at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0, and vertices at negative 3, 0, and 3, 0. Pause the video and find an equation for this ellipse. OK, so hopefully you found the equation of the ellipse. You should have noticed that this is going to be along the x-axis uh, for the same reason as the last one, because the foci are along the x-axis. a here is going to be equal to 3. c is going to be equal to 2. So then we can calculate that b squared is going to be equal to uh, 9 minus 4, which is 5. So b is equal to the square root of 5. So then my ellipse equation is going to be x squared over 9, right, over a squared, plus y squared over b squared, which is 5, is equal to 1. And that gives me the equation of my ellipse. Okay, So now you can go in both directions. You can go either from foci and vertices to writing down the equation, or you can take an equation and from that extract the foci and the vertices. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at ellipses that are not centered at the origin. Right? All the ellipses we've worked with so far are centered at the origin. Let's say instead I want to work with an ellipse that has a center at hk. Okay. So you're still going to have two versions of the ellipse equation, because we can either have an ellipse that has a major axis that is parallel to the x-axis, or a major axis that is parallel to the y-axis. So if it's centered at hk, I want to be able to write down uh, whether my major axis is parallel to x or y, uh, where my foci are going to be, and where my vertices are going to be. So if it's centered at hk, uh, my first kind of equation I can have is x minus h squared divided by a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And remember, too, you know, from function transformations that hopefully you've, you've studied in the past, you know, doing x minus something right in it, just replacing x with x minus h, is just going to shift the function over by h. And then replacing y with y minus k is going to shift it up or down uh, by k. If I'm doing a minus, it's going to shift it up. So we're just translating this. I'm translating this over to the right h units and then up k units. Therefore, my center will be located at hk. So the major axis here is going to be parallel. I'm going to use this symbol as parallel to, parallel to the x-axis. Because remember, a is bigger than b, and my bigger number is still underneath the x. The foci are going to be located at h minus c k and h plus c k. And the vertices are going to follow a similar pattern. You're going to have h minus a k and h plus a k. 
Um, so then I want to also consider the other case where my major axis is parallel to the y-axis. So if I'm parallel to the y-axis, then I'm going to have x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to 1. Now, that means that my foci are going to shift again. Uh, this time, though, my foci need to be um, changing their y coordinate. So I'm going to have h, k minus c, h, k plus c. I'm going to graph all of this in just a moment so you'll be able to visualize it. Uh, and the vertices change in the same way. h, k minus a, h, k plus a. So this is just a helpful little table. Um, make sure you, you know, jot this down. Uh, this will help you to just have a reference uh, if you see an ellipse that is not centered at the origin, which you most certainly will. So let's graph these two. Um, if I have an ellipse uh, that is centered at hk and has its major axis uh, parallel to the x-axis, maybe I have something that looks like this. Yeah, that might be my best ellipse of the day. Okay, so the center is uh, located at hk. My vertices are going to be h plus a k and h minus a k. And then um, my b points are going to be h k plus b or sorry, this is one, this one is minus b, and h, k plus b. My foci are going to be in between, right, on this major axis that is parallel to my x-axis. Uh, they're going to be located at h minus c, k, and h plus c, k. Okay. Now, uh, if you have a major axis that's parallel to the y instead, it's basically the exact same thing, except now instead you have, you know, if you have it like this way instead, this would be h, k plus a, h, k minus a. Then the points over here would be uh, h plus b, k, and h minus b, k. Um, and the uh, foci would shift in a, in, a, in a corresponding way as well. So that's what that looks like. Uh, now I'm going to do one problem with uh, this kind of uh, non-centered at the origin. So let's say I have this equation, x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y plus 2 squared over 9 equals 1. And I want you to tell me where is the center of this ellipse and where are the foci, and then graph it. So the center is located at hk. So the center is going to be at 1, negative 2. Remember that anytime you don't have a minus, right, it's going to be negative because the default form is x minus h. So if you have x minus 1, it's going to be positive 1. And if you have plus something, that means it has to be a negative number. Okay, so center is 1, negative 2. Uh, a here is equal to 3. B is equal to 2. And from that, I can get c. Right, c is going to be equal to the square root of 5. Since we're doing a squared minus b squared, 9 minus 4, square root of that is 5. So now I can graph this. I know that my major axis is going to be, yeah, that was a pretty bad line, major axis is going to be parallel to the y-axis because my larger number is underneath y. So I have my center at 1, negative 2, right here. Um, my vertices are going to be located three away from the center, right? A is three. So uh, let's do this. One, two, three. And then I have to go down. One, two, three down here. Um, the endpoints of my minor axis are going to be two away. So one, two, one, two. Foci are going to be uh, root 5 away from the center. So root 5 is a little under 2. So 1, 2, so it's going to be like 1 here, 1, 2, like 1 here. And then I do my ellipse. 
as best I can, which is not very good. So I have my major axis here, minor axis here, and I have all of my key points. Um, it's good to label these as well. So this is 1, 1. This is 3, negative 2. This is negative 1, negative 2. And this is 1, negative 5. And then the foci you can also label as well. Um, and that's it. That's how you do ellipses that are not centered uh, at the origin. Okay. So um, that's our video on ellipses. Next, we'll be talking about hyperbolas in the next video.